Hi, I want to welcome you to the R Factor webinar. I have some really exciting information to share with you. In fact, I'm going to be giving you proven strategies for building the kind of life, lifestyle, career, and future you've been waiting for. So a little bit about me. I'm a master level integrative life coach, and my passion is to live the largest version of my life that I can. I want to have more joy, more happiness, more financial success, and better relationships with my children, my friends, and my partner. And most importantly, I have more self-love and more courage and more confidence. So here are examples of unconditional love for me. These are two of my granddaughters, and this is my dog, Bliss. And I include them as reminders that we all need to love ourselves the way our pets and our babies love us. So my life's mission is to step out of my comfort zone often to live a juicier life. And here's an example of me. This is a gift I gave myself for turning 60. I trained and I climbed Kilimanjaro. It was an amazing experience and I rocked it. So I'm just curious, what's your Kilimanjaro? And another question I have for you is what area of your life holds the greatest discrepancy between where you are and where you want to be? I just want you to keep that in the back of your mind as we move through this webinar. And I have three promises to make to you. One, I promise to share four strategies that will change your life. Two, I promise a very special opportunity at the end of the webinar. And three, I promise to answer 100% of your questions if you email them to me after the webinar. So if life is feeling a little bit stagnant for you right now, like you're going through the motions every day and nothing really changes, I want to take you through a proven process that will start you moving towards the future you dream about. And I want to give you the proven process that will take you from where you are today to where you want to be. So these proven strategies I'll be sharing are already being used by top achievers around the world. And they've got lifestyles that they love and terrific relationships, fascinating causes that are important to them, all the money they need. And of course, they've got the freedom of making their own schedule to focus on the things they want to do. I'm happy to have you with me today to go through this proven formula. And it's just a matter of following the steps. So if you've had a chance to download and print out the workbook that's included free with this webinar, you will see the worksheets and you can do them on your own time. You won't need them now. So let's get started. E plus R equals O. The first step to creating a different future is actually an equation that changes everything. E stands for the event, R is the response, and O is the outcome. E plus R equals O. When I first learned this equation, I responded to life's ev ev events as they came up. If I got a flat tire, I responded with frustration. If my bank account was in trouble, I was miserable. If there was bumper to bumper traffic when I was running late for something, I blamed the traffic. That was until I learned this equation for responding differently to life's events when they came up. Here's the reality. Events just happen. Often you cannot control them because they materialize as a result of specific situations, other people's emotions, timing, the economy, the weather, a million other details that are outside your control. As I said, events just happen. But what most people do when faced with events is they feel harassed and stressed. They'll do anything to make the situation go away. Well, that's reactionary, and unfortunately, it often produces an outcome they don't want. So what's their first inclination? To blame the event for their bad outcome. Unfortunately, blaming an event for producing a negative in your life puts all the power outside of your control. There's nothing you can do about external events. They happen. That's reality. So the only way to get a good outcome 
is to respond in a way that will bring about the outcome that you want. So here's an example. When my fiance and I broke up a few years ago, my first reaction was that of the victim. But from this work, I realized that we really co-created the end of the relationship. We needed to separate from each other. That was what we needed for the evolution of our souls. And then I was free to see the gifts and the lessons from our time together. And then my reaction and thus my outcome was very different than what it would have been. So today, the first step in this life-changing formula I've been talking about is to take responsibility for how you respond to events, mishaps, and catastrophes, but especially for how you respond to opportunities that come up. This doesn't mean you have to take responsibility for the event itself. That is usually out of your hands. But how you respond is 100% within your control. And it's the one leverage point where you can change what you get out of life. So taking more responsibility for your responses is the first and most important step toward creating more success in your lives. You can be thoughtful and deliberate, or you can be frustrated and reactive and emotional. It's always your choice. And what's so terrific about this concept is that it puts control back in your hands. This is especially important when opportunities come up, opportunities for you to get ahead or achieve what you want. Do you know that some people react emotionally when an actual opportunity presents itself? You know, they complain that the timing isn't right or they're not ready or that it will require a lot of work to respond to the opportunity or that they don't have the money right now. You'd really be surprised at the complaints you hear from some people when an opportunity actually arises. Here's the second point about the E plus R equals O equation. You have to give up blaming and complaining about the event and focus on how you respond appropriately and positively. Getting back to negative events that happen, what do most people do? They complain to the wrong person. If I'm upset that my boss, Erica, has given me a ton of extra work to finish by tomorrow morning, I complain to my coworker, Stephen. And if I'm upset that my partner spent too much money on a major purchase without consulting me, I complain to my best friend. Well, that doesn't solve anything because I'm complaining to the wrong person. It's wasted energy. I need to tell Erica that her timing or prioritization of projects isn't working that we need to do a better system of scheduling. And I need to have a conversation with my partner so that we can create a budget so that major purchases are planned and that we decide on them before we buy them. So if I speak to the right person instead of the wrong person, the right person can do something about it. They have feedback that I would like something different. Of course, that person won't always grant my request, but at least communicating my request is the first step to actually getting what I want. It's management 101. People are not mind readers. It's up to us to speak our truth and let people know what we need. But what about natural disasters and other events that don't involve individual people? Well, I can respond differently to those events also. I can leave an extra 20 minutes early for meetings in case of traffic. I can upgrade my skills so that I'm still valuable when the new management team comes in after my company gets bought out. And I can have the right kinds of healthy foods in my refrigerator so that I'm not eating on the run or grabbing food just because I'm too busy to cook or shop. So instead of spending most of our time blaming things outside of ourselves, the weather, our boss, the traffic, the economy, or the current president, we can take action in advance and be prepared. We can devise ways to increase our options should disaster occur. And whatever the world throws at us, we have to stop blaming something outside of ourselves. So taking more responsibility for our responses to events is the first and the most important step toward creating more success in our lives. 
Another important part of taking responsibility and not being a victim in life is watching out for something that I call yellow alerts. Yellow alerts are little events or comments or reoccurring situations that you notice that act as clues that something is happening or is about to happen that's not going to work out in your favor. So here's an example. I hire Sarah as my personal assistant. Two months later, she says, I'm thinking about marrying a wonderful guy who lives in the Bahamas. But I ignore that. And a month later, Sarah says she's really falling in love with this guy. And she hates the rainy weather here in California. And a few weeks after that, she's buying bridal magazines and looking for real estate in Nassau. And then, all of a sudden, Sarah quits. And I'm surprised and unprepared and scrambling for a new admin solution because I wasn't paying attention to the yellow alerts Sarah was giving me all the time. There are lots of yellow alerts in your life. Maybe your teenager comes home late night after night, night with a rank smell on his clothes. Or your biggest client has been giving projects that are ideal for you to other consultants. And you wonder, what's going on here? but you don't wanna say anything because that would be uncomfortable. Well, unfortunately, because mature conversations and inquiries and taking action is inconvenient and uncomfortable, we tend to deny the yellow alerts rather than act upon them in time. The truth is we're almost always given clues that things are coming. We are not the victims here. So I want to direct your attention to two different exercises in the workbook that was included with today's class. And if you don't have your workbook, then you can just dis, dis, you can download it after this webinar is over. There's a link in the confirmation email when you register today. You won't, you won't need your workbook to do any exercises right now. But to get the most benefit from today's class, please do the exercises sometime this week. And the first exercise that I want to explain is something called a difficult or troubling situation analysis. So just like an unexpected event, we all experience ongoing troubling situations from time to time. It's just part of life. No matter how well you prepare to avoid those hardships, they sometimes simply happen. And if not addressed, they can trouble you for years. It's far easier to resolve the situation than move on. So what kind of situations am I talking about? A teenager or sibling who's not speaking to you, a financial difficulty that's getting worse every day, a health condition, condition that's annoying or nagging or uncomfortable, a tense atmosphere at the office, that sneaky suspicion that your partner's being unfaithful. The key here is to respond to the event, whether it's sudden or longstanding with a commitment to resolving it, so you can move on to creating better outcomes in the future. The difficult or troubling situation analysis will help you get past a current situation so you can focus on your success again. The exercise has full instructions in the workbook, but essentially it asks you to analyze the payoffs or the benefits that you get for keeping the situation like it is the negative cost of keeping it like it is, and your part in creating or allowing it to be like it is, and actions you could take or requests you could make to get what you want instead. The truth is we always get something out of a situation we stay in or we wouldn't stay in it. So even if we don't know the benefit, there's some benefit that there's a perceived benefit that we're getting. So dig deep and try to be honest with yourself. Don't fail to respond to a troubling situation because it's easier, more convenient, less uncomfortable, less confrontational, keeps the peace, or doesn't require taking action or taking risks. Take the action. Don't allow negative outcomes to be your fate. In the same way, you don't want to fail to respond to a yellow alert because it's easier or more convenient or less confrontational. There's a second exercise in your workbook and it's called, what are you pretending not to know? If you experience negative outcomes in your life, 
Perhaps you're ignoring the facts or excusing your part in creating a problem. To help you identify areas to take corrective action or take action to prevent eventual disaster, the exercise asks you to examine each area of your life and determine if there's a problem that you are ignoring or creating. You might be ignoring something to do with your health or your money or your family or your lifestyle or career. Whatever it is, this exercise will help you respond to the yellow alerts before something disastrous occurs. The next critical step in the proven success formula that I introduced at the beginning is that you have to decide what you want. One of the most amazing phenomena you'll ever experience as you incorporate this formula into your daily life is the unexpected phone call, the, win, the windfall financial benefit, or the uncanny new acquaintance that brings you exactly what you want or need in order to achieve your goals, almost as if it were planned. Perhaps it's the universe rewarding your new take action attitude by harnessing all the forces at its disposal. Or perhaps you've worked hard and have grown yourself to the point where you're finally ready to receive a benefit which has been waiting in the wings all along. But more probably, as researchers now believe, it may simply be a matter of your subconscious mind focusing on and recognizing opportunities when it arrives. Whatever the explanation, the reality is that what you want, wants you. Your goals, desires, and needs are patiently waiting to gravitate towards you once you decide what you truly want. And of course, the main reason why most people don't get what they want is that they haven't decided what that want is. They haven't defined their goals exactly in clear and compelling detail. After all, how else can your mind know where to begin looking and seeing and hearing if you don't give it specific and detailed goals to achieve. There's a very powerful technique for helping you define what you want in vivid detail. And I'll be talking about the technique in just a moment. But before defining the ideal life you want for yourself, here's a word of caution. Make sure that your wants are personally important to you, not those that you believe should be important or those that the world expects you to have, or something your partner or your parent wants you to focus on, but what's truly important to you from the deepest place in your heart? Please don't live someone else's dream. And unfortunately, the sad reality for most people is that they simply aren't honest with themselves. If they were, they would realize that their shoulds are almost always less interesting and more hassle than what they truly want. Here's an example. Many people who become social media influences, influencers or industry experts, well, they were working dull jobs and following a career that other people thought was fantastic, but they weren't really fulfilled. It wasn't meaningful and maybe not even lucrative until they started doing what they loved. Maybe it was a blog or they started consulting with small businesses or they started writing a book. Once they were living the life they truly wanted, all the necessary opportunities showed up, including the money. One of the easiest ways to decide what you truly want is to make a list. So here's an exercise. Sit down, take about 10 minutes and ask yourself over and over again, what do you want? What do you want? While you jot down your answers. You'll find the first wants you run through aren't all that profound. In fact, most people usually hear themselves saying, I want a Mercedes, or I want a big house on the ocean, and so on. But by the end of the 10 minute exercise, the real you begins to speak. Things like, I want people to love me. I wanna make a difference. I wanna feel joy. I wanna be significant in my field. Wants that are true expressions of your heartfelt desires. 
So that's a quick exercise that you can do. And you can do it alone or you can do it with a friend and you can each ask each other what it is that you want. But to really create your definitive list, I want you to turn to the page in your workbook and find an exercise called the vision exercise. And it will help you decide what you want to be, do, and have in the seven major areas of your life. The vision exercise is also located in your workbook. And this is an exercise that you do privately, just you alone. So start by putting some relaxing music on or sitting quietly in a comfortable environment where you won't be disturbed. And then close your eyes and ask your subconscious mind to give you images of what your ideal life would look like if you were living it exactly as you want. You're going to visualize your life in seven key areas, your career and professional life, your finances, your recreation and free time, your body and physical health, your relationships, your personal growth, and your community work. And as you go through the exercise, you'll be defining what you want to be, do, and have in each of these seven areas. There are ideas, prompts, and memory joggers in each section to help you think about your ideal life. But your subconscious mind knows that you want. It knows already and should be the ultimate source of ideas for you. Even if you don't have the workbook with you, we're just going to do a little bit of this exercise right now. So just close your eyes and begin taking a deep, slow breath. And put your attention into, on your heart or where your inner wisdom lies within you. And take another deep breath and fill in that place. Fill it up fully. And with each exhale and each inhale, just relax a little more. And now imagine you are in your ideal home environment. One year from now, where is it located? What is the view outside the windows? What are the colors of the main living area? What kind of decor or art objects do you have in your home? How do you feel as you stroll through the rooms of your ideal home? And how do you feel when you come home and you drive up the driveway? Now come back slowly and open your eyes. What you just did was an example of the vision exercise you'll be doing later in the workbook. And it takes time and don't rush it. And if you don't immediately see images of the different areas of your life, that is perfectly okay. It still works just as well if you're just thinking of the ideal elements versus actually seeing yourself in these environments. Just let your mind wander a bit, dream a little, play all out. What's the biggest vision for that area? And when the idea comes to you, write them down in the workbook. The answers are all inside of you. You just have to allow them to be uncovered. Your heart, your inner wisdom know exactly what you want and need. Many people set aside an evening to do the rest of that exercise. It's an important one because they will ultimately form a goals list of things that you want to work on. Okay, so here's some really good news. Those wants that you'll be identifying later in your workbook are achievable. In fact, most people, for, every, for most people, everything we want, someone's already done it, created it, owned it, achieved it. There's not really that much that we want anymore that's so lofty it can't be accomplished. But the key to getting what you want, and here is step three in the formula, is to set goals around the things that you want to be, do, and have. And so how do we set a goal? 
by writing it in a way that is specific and measurable. That is, someone other than you can know for certain whether you've achieved it or not. So let me give you an example. If you said, I want to own a house by the beach someday, well, that's a nice dream or a vision or a desire that you have. But to make it specific and measurable, you need more information and you need to state it in a way that there's a certainty. You're going to have that beach house one day like this. I will own a 4,000 square foot house on Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu, California by April 30th, 2025. Do you hear the difference? This second version of your goal tells your brain exactly what you want to achieve, not just a vague, dreamy hope. If you want to retire early with millions of dollars invested, for example, state the exact amount you'll have invested on the exact date you plan to retire. As, as part of the vision exercise in this workbook, you'll be turning all of your quote unquote wants into specific and measurable goals that you can begin working on and achieving. That's exercise number four. And here's a bonus idea. Why not create minimum goals, target goals, and outrageous goals? Whenever you write down your specific and measurable goals, set three different levels that you will achieve. Let's say you want to build a large savings account and get out of debt. A minimum goal might be putting together a $1,000 emergency fund in the next 30 days. A target goal might be to save three to six months of living expenses in the next eight months. And an outrageous goal might be to pay off all your consumer debt, maybe even your mortgage, in the next seven years. So the outrageous goal is always something that would just blow your mind if you achieved it. Your target goal is usually something within your capabilities. And your minimum goal is something you're almost guaranteed to reach, but it gets you going and taking action. Whereas an outrageous goal might seem too overwhelming to start. You know how many times there have been projects that seem so big, it just feels so heavy that you can't get going. And the not getting going makes you feel even worse about yourself. So now you're not doing what you need to do or want to do, and you're beating yourself up about it. So what happens with this minimum target optimum formula is that most people will start with the minimum, and then they get motivated, and then they, up, they end up reaching their target goal very easily. Have you ever said, I'm just going to clean those old dishes stored in the garage, and then the next thing you know, you've cleaned out the entire garage? And you've even called a charity to come and haul it all away. Well, it was just a matter of getting started. And that's how you achieve your goals, by little steps. They build, they add up. So while goal setting is an important step to achieving the wants on your dream list, most of the goals that we focus on improving our life are things in the moment. Get the house painted, finish my sales report, clean out the laundry room, lose 15 pounds. But what if instead you focused on a single goal that would up-level everything you do, from your career, to your income, to your lifestyle? Wouldn't that be worth pursuing with passion? Wouldn't that be something to focus on a little each day until you achieved it? Think about it. If you were an independent sales professional and you knew you could get a substantial bonus commission and maybe even a promotion once you landed a certain number of customers, wouldn't you work day and night to achieve that goal? And if you were a stay-at-home mom whose entire lifestyle and finances would change by earning an extra $3,000 a month, wouldn't you pursue every opportunity for side work or your own part-time business to achieve that goal? Well, that's what I mean by a breakthrough goal, something that changes your life, brings you new opportunities, gets you in front of the right people, 
in up levels every activity, relationship, or group you're involved in. So what might your single breakthrough goal be? Well, there's an exercise in the workbook that's gonna help you decide. But for the purposes of this webinar, whether you believe you can achieve it or not, what one single change in your career, business, lifestyle, or relationships would boost you to the next level? Is it landing a promotion, changing jobs, moving, expanding your business, finding your soulmate, going back to school, retiring early, or some other goal? Take some time later to think about your breakthrough goal. And there's a page in the workbook to figure it out and jot it down. Just look for exercise number five. I wanna finish our discussion of goal setting by talking about a technique that will help you achieve major goals in record time. It's a way to get your brain focused on assembling the resources, people, money, and circumstances needed to bring about your everyday goals and especially your breakthrough goal. It's called affirmations. Affirmations are vividly detailed statements of you living, working, and enjoying life as if your goals have already been achieved. Affirmations help the brain focus on bringing about your heartfelt desires. One example of an affirmation is, I'm happily depositing my $100,000 royalty check as a best-selling author. Another affirmation is, I'm joyfully loving my husband and my marriage. So how do affirmations work? As scientists now know, the brain is a goal-seeking organism. If you give it a compelling, colorful, crystal clear image of what you want, it will work night and day to create the opportunities, contacts, resources, and circumstances needed to achieve that vision. In fact, the brain has a special function called the reticular activating system and that filters through the millions of impressions, images, messages, and thoughts it processes each day. It then passes the information to your conscious mind that will help you reach your goal. So for example, if you've ever thought about speaking at your industry convention as a way to boost your career, and then immediately remembered you met the national education director last month at a trade show, that's your reticular activating system bringing you ideas and context that can help you achieve your goal. Reciting your affirmations frequently throughout the day actually focuses your brain on the goals you want to achieve. Writing them on index cards, placing sticky notes on your mirrors, your smartphone wallpaper, or in other places you see frequently is a way to constantly focus on your most important goals. I love to put affirmations on my bathroom mirror, and then I see it many times a day. And you don't always have to know how you'll, you will accomplish the goal. So just keep visualizing yourself in the future as if you've already achieved it. It's always powerful to add color and sounds, emotions, and other sensory aspects to your visualization time. And as you review your notes, Try to experience the feeling of confidence as you deliver the keynote address at your industry's conference or the scent of cinnamon rolls baking at the bed and breakfast that you just, you just bought or the sound of waves breaking at the senior executive's retreat in Hawaii or the joy you feel as you're living out your dream career or professional accomplishment. Repetition is the key. And the workbook includes detailed guidelines to help you write powerfully effective affirmations for your unique situation, using your goals from the previous exercises about what you want to be, do, and have. So look for exercise number six. And of course, we've come to the most important step in the original four-part formula I introduced earlier. It's step number four. Take action on your goals. Sometimes our biggest life goals seem so overwhelming. And though we may work hard at achieving them, too often we decide to put them off altogether until we have more time, more focus, more energy, more manpower, more money. 
We rarely see our goals as a series of small steps. But in reality, breaking down the goal into smaller steps and accomplishing them a few at a time is precisely how any big goal gets achieved. So by breaking down your goal into bite-sized pieces and baby steps, you can begin accomplishing the small task that you've determined will lead you to achieving your goal. But beware, preparing to move forward isn't the same as taking action itself. In other words, preparation, research, planning, getting it perfect, these are all areas where people get bogged down and never actually start taking action. They're too busy getting ready. But the one way that I recommend you actually start to take action on your goal is something that I call chunking it down. If you have a target goal of saving three to six months worth of living expenses in an emergency fund, which is the sample goal we mentioned earlier, what steps could you take to pull that money together over the next eight months? So could you, number one, determine the amount of money per month that you would need? Two, identify what portion of your current savings you might use for this special fund. Three, make a list of money sources to save such as overtime pay at work or a holiday bonus. Four, make a list of unused items that you could sell on Craigslist or a garage sale. And number five, open a new bank account for this money so it remains separate. These five, five steps, which are essentially research and making lists and going to the bank, are all things you could do in just one day. In fact, probably in one afternoon. By making lists of what needs to be done, you've effectively chunked down all the tasks into small steps that are doable and achievable. Which leads me to a helpful strategy for taking action. And that is the practice that is called the rule of five. The rule of five simply means that every day you do five specific things that will move your goal towards completion. Bigger goals might take longer, but the rule of five still applies. Do five things every day until your goal is achieved. So take buying a house in Hawaii, for example. That's a really big goal. But chunking it down and doing five things a day still applies. You have to find out where the best locations are. You have to decide which island you want to live on. You have to find out how much homes there cost. You have to determine how much money you'll need to save. You'll have to research where you can get your financing, decide where you'll get your furniture, determine the repairs or the decorating budget that you'll need, and so on and so on. And once you decide all these things and chunk each load larger goal down into smaller steps, you will be able to begin to take action on these steps, five steps a day until you achieve your goal. While he didn't call it the rule of five, a seminar leader I know once said, in order to arrive at the life of your dreams, you simply one, make a wish list of the activities, finances, and lifestyle you'll be enjoying once you get there and then break down each wish on the list into steps you'll need to take to achieve it. And then choose a number of those steps to achieve each week or month or year, and then achieve them. That's the game plan we're talking about here for achieving the life of your dreams, or for achieving virtually any impressive goal you've set for yourself. So is there, if there's something that hinders people from taking any action of all, it's really the feeling that they can't accomplish even the smallest of baby steps. They don't feel confident. Another is that they feel overwhelmed by the sheer amount of stuff that they already have to do. And the third is that they have to ask someone for something in order to make it happen. And asking is something that people are just afraid to do. So let's address these obstacles right now. I'm actually going to start with the second one I mentioned. People feel overwhelmed by the number of tasks they already have to do. Most of us have incompletes and messes in our households, offices, relationships, families, finances, and other major areas of our lives. We've got overflowing closets and broken screen doors, 
and years worth of tax paper and bills that aren't filed. And maybe we have a fight with a sibling or a friend that's unresolved and a nagging health condition we need to address and on and on. We have incomplete tasks and messes that aren't cleaned up. So one way to stop feeling overwhelmed by what you already have to do is to clean up these messes and incompletes first. It's especially important to handle these incompletes is because what psychologists call attention units. You can only attend to seven things at once. Beyond that, you can't. So when you have a cluttered desk, when you're constantly seeing all those papers and unanswered letters and 3,000 emails in your inbox, these things steal your focus away from other tasks that you want to accomplish. You look over your mental to-do list and you think, oh, I should move that. I should put that away. I need to answer that. And the more incomplete you have in your life, the more you focus and you, the more you, your focus and creative energy gets fractured and scattered. The other reason it's important to clean up your messes and your incompletes is that doing so builds self-confidence and self-esteem. When we have a lot of incompletes in our life, we're consciously or unconsciously judging ourselves as incompetent and incapable because we haven't completed them. Every time you look at these messes, they're reflecting back to us the message, you aren't handling me. And we're either afraid to handle them or we don't know how to handle them. And this fear and lack of the knowledge compromises our feeling of competence. It weighs down on us, it steals our self-esteem, and it keeps us stuck. But by handling the incompletes, we get more time in our life to focus on those steps that will bring about the really important goals and dreams that we have. So take the time to put all your incompletes and messes down on one list. You can put it on paper, you can put it in a notebook, or you can put it in your computer. And walk around the house, take some time, make notes from room to room. Go through your stack of bills to find anything not handled. And then think about your partner and your relationships. And if there's anything that's in bad shape or there's something left undone, try to handle it. And once you have everything on the list, you can pri prioritize them. And then tackle one a day, one a week, one a month, one a quarter. And then you don't have to think about everything on that list because they're on the list. And they're going to be handled in the order of their importance. You can even apply the minimum target optimum model to the messes. What's the minimum goal or the smallest incomplete that you will commit to handling this weekend? What's a larger mess or incomplete that you could make a target goal to handle this month? And what's an outrageous goal that you could handle, such as an incomplete home renovation over the next 90 days? Handling incompletes and messes boosts your confidence and creates available attention span in your life to tackle the five things a day you want to do to reach your really big goals. Incompletes weigh on you whether you think they do or not. But when you check them off your list, you're going to feel the lightness that comes over you. There's a freedom with cleaning up your incompletes. But let's address the third roadblock road that keeps people from taking action on their goals. And that is they lack the confidence when asking for what they, what, what they want or what they need from people who can help them reach their goals. Asking for the help you need is still a challenge that holds many people back. Why are people so afraid to ask? We're afraid of several things, looking needy, looking foolish, looking ignorant, but mostly we're afraid of experiencing rejection. We're afraid of hearing the word no. The sad thing is when we don't ask, we're actually rejecting ourselves in advance. We're saying no to ourselves before anyone else has a chance to. If you don't ask, the answer will always be no. But here's an illustration to think about. If you apply to Harvard and you don't get in, you weren't in Harvard before you applied, and you're not in Harvard after you applied. So your life didn't get worse. 
And think about it. You spent your whole life not going to Harvard. So you know how to handle that. Someone telling you no doesn't make your situation any worse. It keeps it the same. So here's a specific action step. There's a specific science to asking for and getting what you want or need in the pursuit of your goals. And here are some quick tips to get you more comfortable with asking. Number one, ask as if you expect to get it. Ask with a positive expectation. Ask from the place that you already have been given it. It's a done deal. Ask as if you expect to get a yes. Number two, assume you can. Don't start with the assumption that you can't get it. If you're going to assume, assume that you get an upgrade. Assume you get a table by the window. Assume that you, you can return it without a sales slip. Assume that you can get a raise or that promotion. Don't ever assume against yourself. And number three, ask someone who can give it to you. Qualify the person, determine for yourself, who would I have to speak to to get this accomplished? Who is authorized to make a decision about that? Who do I have to speak with to get whatever it is you're asking for? Number four, be clear and specific. Too many people are walking around wanting more money, more love, more help around the house, more recognition at work, more of everything, but they're not being specific. Do you want enough money to retire? How much is that? Do you wanna go on a date night twice a month? Do you want the kids picking up their bedroom every Friday or the laundry done by Saturday morning? If you're not sure about the specifics, do the research of what it takes and then make your specific requests. Number five, ask repeatedly. Never give up. Whenever we ask others to participate in the fulfillment of our goals, some people are going to say no. They may have other priorities, commitments, and reasons not to participate. It's no reflection on you. Everyone has busy lives. We don't know what is going on in other people's lives. So just get used to the idea that there's going to be a lot of rejection along the way to the brass ring. And the key is not to give up. When someone says no, you say next. Which brings me to number six, ask someone else. Remember there are over 6 billion people on the planet. Someone else has enough authorization, is skilled enough, knowledgeable enough, emotionally invested enough, or otherwise capable of saying yes to you. Don't get stuck in your fear. Move on to the next person and the next person and the next until you connect with the person who can help you. It's really just a numbers game. Someone out there is waiting to say yes. Well, we've come to the end of today's webinar, but I wanna close with two things. Number one, I want you to choose right now one thing that you're going to commit to doing that's going to help create the future you deserve. Starting today, whether it's complete the decide what you want exercise in the workbook or write your affirmations on sticky notes or three by five cards or handle a difficult and troubling situation, whatever it is, make a mental commitment now and then write it down so you have it because a plan is much better when it's written down. And remember that when we do share them, they're more likely to be achieved. Secondly, one of the things I really enjoy doing is coaching and advising people and achieving their life dreams by setting goals and taking actions. This webinar and the accompanying workbook are just a small part of what I do with my clients. So below is my contact information. You can copy it or take a photo of it. And one of the promises at the beginning of the webinar was a special offer that I was going to make at the end of the webinar. Well, here you are and here it is. So I'm an integrative life coach. I help my clients uncover disempowering beliefs that were formed early in life and buried in their subconscious. We all have them. They're called shadow beliefs because they lie in the shadows below our conscious level. We aren't aware of them, but they keep us repeating negative and sabotaging behaviors, 
and attracting people and situations into our lives that argue for our very limitations. Once uncovered, we are free to move forward and make the changes necessary to have the life we imagine. So my offer to you is one discovery call to hear what is going on in your life and then a two-for-one, one-on-one coaching session to help you uncover some of your, your beliefs that have been keeping you stuck. All three sessions are being offered for the price of one. Contact me through my email or my website or directly on my calendar link that was below. So I'd like to close with an invitation to contact me for any additional help that you need. Sometimes it's difficult to find a friend or a family member to work on these life-changing concepts with you. They aren't always supportive and may even be throwing roadblocks on your way. I offer many different coaching packages for one-on-one -on -one coaching, and most of them can be seen on my website. And don't forget, no one gets to the Olympics without a coach. So this is the time for my third promise, which is that I will answer any questions that you have. So feel free to email me and I will get back to you promptly. And you can take a picture of this or a screenshot. So thank you for joining me for today's webinar. I am so grateful for your attendance and welcome any feedback. I'm inspired by like-minded people who are looking to change their lives. And I hope you receive some valuable tools to move you towards the life you dream of. And I am sending blessings and light.